Welcome to the lecture series on Carnatic music. In this session, we shall discuss about another important instrument of Indian music, the harmonium. The following topics would be discussed in this session. Introduction, History, Current Scenario of the Harmonium, Paths of the Harmonium and Renowned Harmonium Players. Introduction The harmonium is one of the most commonly used free reed aerophone in Indian music today. Though the mouth organ and accordion also fall in this category, the former is still considered a children's instrument whereas the latter is more popular in film music. All of these have been imported from the west. This instrument is seen in use across many different genre and is more than likely to be found in almost any household that has an interest in Indian music. It is used to accompany classical vocal music, semi-classical forms, ghazals, bhajans. It's also used by many musicians and composers as the instrument of choice for musical support while composing new tunes. Yet, in spite of the ubiquitous availability and familiarity, the instrument continues to be one of the more controversial ones in Indian music. No foreign instrument, however, has caused such a commotion as the harmonium and none is used so extensively, be it in classical, light, film or folk music. Harmonium is a keyboard instrument on which 12 semitones of the tempered scale are fixed once and for all in all the three octaves, mandara, madhya and tara. On keyboard instruments, only straight notes can be played. Grace notes and quarter notes are not possible. There are no possibilities of slur or gamaka, which are the main essence of Carnatic music and are essential to keep up the spirit of Carnatic raga system. However, it is possible to maintain the continuity of the music to some extent by a skillful handling of the bellows and finger pressure on the keys, but it cannot compete with the continuity of the human voice or the sarangi's sound. Although roughly the Indian scale of music of 12 semitones is nearly the same as that in Western music, <laughs>
there are certain vital and perceptible differences between the two. The Indian concept of swara does not relate it to a specific pitch point but to a pitch range with variegated possibilities of shades and nuances. No keyboard instrument can respond to this concept of swara. History Those familiar with Hindustani classical music know that the harmonium as an instrument has had a very colourful, controversial and paradoxical history in many respects. During the mid-19th century, missionaries brought French-made hand-pumped harmoniums to India. The instrument quickly became popular there. It was portable, reliable and easy to learn. It has remained popular to the present day and the harmonium remains an important instrument in many genres of Indian music. For example, it is staple for vocal North Indian classical music concerts. It is commonly found in Indian homes. Though derived from the designs developed in France, the harmonium was developed further in India in unique ways such as the addition of drone stops and a scale-changing mechanism. In Kolkata, Dwarkanath Ghosh of the Dwarkin Company modified the imported harmony flute and developed the hand-held harmonium which has subsequently become an integral part of the Indian music scenario. Dvijendranath Tagore is credited with having used the imported instrument in 1860 in his private theatre, but it was probably a pedal-pumped instrument that was burdensome or possibly some variation of the reed organ. Initially, it aroused curiosity, but gradually people started playing it and Goes took the initiative to modify it. It was in response to the Indian needs that the hand-held harmonium was introduced. All Indian musical instruments are played with the musician sitting on the floor or on a stage behind the instrument or holding it in his hands. In that era, Indian homes did not use tables and chairs. Also, Western music being harmonically based, both the player's hands were needed to play the chords. Thus, assigning the bellows to the feet was the best solution. Indian music being melodically based, only one hand was necessary to play the melody and the other hand was free for the bellows. One might think that the accordion would fit with the Indian musical taste as well, but with fewer adaptations. Although the British knew the accordion, it wasn't their instruments as it was for the French or the Germans. Thus, few accordions came to India during the British period. The harmonium was widely accepted in Indian music, particularly Parsi and Marathi stage music in the late 19th century. By the early 20th century, however, in the context of nationalist movements that sought to depict India as utterly separate from the West, the harmonium was portrayed as an unwanted foreigner. Technical concerns with the harmonium included its inability to produce meaned slides between notes and the fact that once tuned it cannot be adjusted in the course of performance. The former prevents it from articulating the subtle inflections or gentle oscillation so crucial to many ragas. The latter prevents it from articulating the subtle differences in international colour between a given swara in two different ragas. For these reasons, it was banned from the All India Radio from 1940 to 1971. A ban still stands on harmonium solos. On the other hand, 
many of the harmonium's qualities suited it very well for the newly reformed classical music of the early 20th century. It is easy for amateurs to learn. It supports group singing and large voice classes. It provides a template for standardized raga grammar. It is loud enough to provide a drone in a concert hall. For these reasons, it has become the instrument of choice for accompanying most North Indian classical vocal genre with top vocalists like Bhimsen Joshi routinely using harmonium accompaniment in their concerts. However, it is still despised due to its foreign origin by some connoisseurs of Indian music who prefer the sarangi as an accompanying instrument for khayal singing. Current Scenario of the Harmonium A popular usage is by the followers of the Hindu and Sikh faiths who use it to accompany their devotional songs or bhajan or kirtan. There is at least one harmonium in any Hindu temple or gurudwara around the world. The harmonium is commonly accompanied by the tabla as well as the dolak. To Sikhs, the harmonium is known as the vajha or bhaja. It is also referred to as a peti, literally box, in some parts of North India and Maharashtra. The harmonium plays an integral part in Kawali music. Almost all Kawals use the harmonium as their sole musical accompaniment. Bhishma Dev Vedi is said to have been the first to contemplate improving the instrument by augmenting it with a string box like a harp attached to the top of the instrument. His disciple Manohar Chimote later implemented this concept and called the instrument a Samavadini, a name now widely accepted. Bhishma Dev Vedi is also said to have been among the first to contemplate and design compositions specifically for the harmonium styled along the lines of Tantakari, performance of music on stringed instrument. These compositions tend to have a lot of cut notes and high speed passages creating an effect similar to that of a string being plucked. Crispness of tanam, constancy of sound production, ability to play cut notes, ability to provide a strong melodic support volume during accompaniment are some of the strengths of the instrument. And <laughs> artist with the use of deft technique can use these strengths and their training in classical music to dwarf the shortcomings of the instrument. By appropriately tuning the instrument and creating new techniques and modifications that enhance the performance ability of the instrument, a lot of the able harmonium players are now carrying forward the torch and continuing to further popularize the art of harmonium solo. Experimental duet concerts, harmonium in duet with flute, sitar, accordion, mandolin, sarangi, etc. are also catching the eyes of audiences. In India as well as abroad, harmonium solos are starting to get acceptance and a spot in music conferences. Parts of a Harmonium For the past four or five decades, 
the harmonium has undergone great refinement and is today far removed from its elementary stage. Today's version of the harmonium is capable of providing a whole range of tonal excellence very rare in other instruments. A top quality harmonium has two, three or four sets of reeds. The instrument covers three to four octaves encompassing sub, bass, bass, medium and female. The instrument is larger and has built-in gadgets to filter the air through two compartments. The merit of this arrangement is that when the air is blown into it, it does not strike the reeds aggressively. From the airtight compartments, the wind emerges softly through the reeds when a key is pressed. In the olden days, the instrument was equipped with only a single piece reed board. This made the sound it produced harsh and strident. Present day harmoniums have three reed boards joined together with the provision of air release in a zigzag fashion ensuring softness of tone and melody. The distinctive parts of a harmonium are as follows. The cover is a wooden plane that is placed over the keys and key springs to prevent dust from entering these areas. Most but not all models come with a cover. Coupler is a feature which allows double key function. It automatically presses the corresponding key of the next octave when any key is pressed. Bellows are collapsible cardboard enclosures with the help of which air is passed through the reeds. Key springs are meant for keeping keys in their normal upright position. Keyboard The large stop knobs fitted in front of the harmonium control the airflow into the reeds. The position is adjusted as per the sound required. The smaller stop knobs control the drone extra notes. The reed board hidden under the keys is a plate on which the keys are set and has several holes that are covered using reeds. Renowned Harmonium Players Though the harmonium is not in vogue in the Carnatic music system today, once there were skilled performers on the harmonium in South India, such as Harmonium Kandasami Mudaliyar and Pondicherry T.S. Ramayar and Perur Subramanya Dikshitar etc. In Hindustani music, there have been some brilliant harmonium players. The greatest name connected with the instrument is Bhaiya Ganpat Rao, Soni Babu, Gulam Rasool, Shankar Rao, Kane Ebrahim, Bal Bhatte, Appa Jalgaonkar, Tulsi Ram Borkar, and Manto Banerjee. These were some of the torch bearers of past who have kept the flame alive. Mahmud Dolpuri, Jyoti Go, Seema Shidolkar, Jayant Balodkar, and Sudhir Nayak, among the younger generation, are making their mark in this field. Initially, the harmonium was in use purely as an accompanying instrument. Over the last hundred and some years, many great artists have contributed to this instrument both in solo and accompaniment mode. Contributions have been made structurally musically as well as from a tuning perspective. While the harmonium has come under fire for being incomplete, 
and having shortcomings rendering it unsuitable for Indian music, its popularity as an accompanying instrument has only grown over our times. Today, the harmonium stands at a very interesting juncture in its history. It is slowly but surely rising from a tainted and disadvantaged past to an instrument of respect, fueled but what are now many different classical trained harmonium players who are working diligently toward the cause of this instrument. No instrument is perfect. Every instrument has strengths and weaknesses. So does the harmonium. We thus conclude with this session. We shall meet up in the next session with a different yet popular Carnatic instrument. Thank you. Mm-hmm.